Hello. In this video, we're going to be covering how to set up QImage Ultimate for online printing. We have some photos that we want to upload to a site, and we want to get 4x6 prints back in the mail, for example, or we want to go to our local store and use a machine, put our CD or our flashcard in, and get prints off the machine. At first glance, you may ask, why not just take the photos right off of the camera or the raw files that I've converted with my favorite raw conversion tool and just give those to the service, let them deal with it. Well, what you have to understand is that online printing services are generally geared toward high speed, high volume printing. And they're not going to deal with things like well, this photo is in the wrong color space. They're not going to take the time to convert it. They're not going to take the time to make sure that it's optimized for quality and sharpness for the particular size, say 4x6. So let's use QImage Ultimate to make sure that we get the most out of our online printing service that we're going to use. A lot of times I hear from people when I ask them how they liked whatever service they use, they'll say, yeah, it's cheap, I got the photos back, they're not as good as I can get from home, but I'm not going to complain, they were only eight cents each. And, you know, people just accept that, but you don't have to. QImage Ultimate offers us a way to easily optimize the photo quality that we get back from these online printing services, a way to save our setups and recall them so that each time with a few mouse clicks we're ready to optimize our photos and we're ready to create a new folder of files that are uh, that can be uploaded to the printing service. So let's get started. First thing that we notice up here where my mouse is is that we're set up to print to a printer. Well that's not what we want when we're printing to file. I'm going to send these to a printing service. So I want to go to file, print to, and say print to files instead of a printer. When the page definition comes up, for this example I'm going to be printing a small batch of 4x6 prints. So I'm going to say 4x6 is the size print that I want. 300 ppi is a good resolution to use. It seems to be generally acceptable by all the online printing services so that's safe to use that resolution. Down here I'm going to keep the dot in monitor and web so that it'll use sRGB color space. I click OK and you see that my page becomes formatted for the size that I want. It says print to file 4x6 at 300 ppi and you notice down here that each image that's printed to files is going to be in the sRGB color space and that's what almost all of the online printing services, all of the stores that you could take your photos to are going to use. That's what they're going to be compatible with. So just this one entry here could have saved you a lot of headaches. You're not going to get prints back with reds that look orange or green grass that looks too yellow because you're in the wrong color space. QImage Ultimate is going to make sure that every file that's printed now is in the sRGB color space. So that's going to be compatible with our printing service. That looks good. Here's our 300 ppi, so we know that we're giving them a reasonable resolution to work with. And the one thing that I want you to change here, because we specified we're printing web type images, it doesn't know that these will ultimately be printed on a printer. We want to set sharpening to the default, 5. And all that's doing is it's saying these, yes, I'm creating web type images that can be understood across the web and on a variety of different types of machines but they are going to be printed in the long run so I want to apply sharpening that's appropriate for a 4x6 based on the prints that I put in the queue. So now we have everything set up the last thing that we want to do is make sure that we use the proper print size we've defined the page size so let's hold our right mouse button uh, because we have our print property set up to manual mode here. 4x6 print size is selected and the other thing that we should check is this cropping button here. Make sure that these scissors appear in color which means auto cropping is turned on so that you'll get a 4x6 print even if your original photo is not in that uh, 3 to 2 aspect ratio. 
So now we're done with setup. We've got everything ready to go. I'm just going to add, let's say, these top four photos by clicking the plus button. I've already set my size. If you remember, we just did that. So just clicking the plus button is all we need to do. Now I have four pages of prints here sized the way that I want them. And we know that what we see here is exactly the print that we're going to get back because we set up our page size for the size prints that we're going to order. Now if I wanted to go into the full page editor here, which we cover in other videos, to change the cropping a little bit, these are a little off center, I want to drag it around or I want to zoom in on this horse here. Uh, let me turn the page this way so we can see it better. Uh, it really doesn't matter which orientation your page is in. <clears throat> we can do that. We can, we can set cropping on this any way that we want and the print that we get back we know is going to be what we see on the screen because we set up the proper size. Now that I have my four prints in the queue, the only thing that's left to do is print them. Remember, print in this case means print to file. So we're actually going to be creating files by clicking print. So I click print and in this print to file dialog I'm choosing JPEG and I'm going to change this to 95. That's a number that I like because it gives you really good quality JPEGs with no visible compression issues or artifacts. And down here I'm going to direct your attention to this radio button. Click on auto naming and the user selects the output folder. And QImage Ultimate will remember this for next time. So really you only have to do it this one time. So now I'm set up and it's going to tell me that it just wants a folder when I click OK. I just click OK to print and it says what folder do you want? Well, I'm going to go here and I'm going to create a new folder for my online printing. Let's say I'm using a uh, online printing service called My Prints. I'll just make that up. I know that my main photos folder is called C colon backslash photo C column backslash photos. And I'm going to just add a new name here so that it'll uh, create a new folder. I'm going to call it My Prints. Click OK. It says create a new folder. Yes. And now what it's doing is it's creating that new folder that I told it to create. And it's doing some background processing here. And now when I look down here at the processing meter, I see that it's processing my files. It's opening the raw files. It's printing them to files that have my specifications. sRGB color space, 300 ppi, sharpened appropriately for the 4x6 size, and now it's done already. So now if I want to go see those files, all I've got to do is come up here and I can type or I can browse. I could browse in here if I want to, but I guess I've still got the old hacker DOS mentality, so I like to type. There's nothing wrong with a keyboard. So I'm going to type uh, the same thing that I typed before. C colon backslash photos, my prints, press enter, and there are the four printed files. These are optimized. If you look down on the bottom down here where we have our EXIF hotbar, we can see that. All of these are in the sRGB color space, 1800 by 1200 resolution, which is 300 ppi, and these are ready to be sent to your online printing service. You can go to their web page, upload these, put these on a CD or a flash card, take them to your store. Whatever you want to do, these are ready to go. Now that I know that I've done this job once, I want to save it so that I can load it in the future. I'm going to go up here to the Save button. I'm going to click Save click P down here because I want to save a printer setup. Now this is a print to file setup and it's uh, going to save everything so I'm going to type my prints 4x6. Save that. Now the next time I want to print 4x6's for the my prints service all I have to do is go here and click recall a printer setup click P and then scroll down to the M's or you can type it this one's a short list, so I'll scroll this. I don't have to use my keyboard. Click on the one that I saved, 
my prints four by six and when I open it everything that we went through to set this job up the four by six size the resolution the sharpening everything is recalled so that you don't have to do anything but add your photos and go now let me show you one more trick here I'm gonna clear this queue what if I wanted to print five by sevens to let's say the same service well the only thing we have to do is load our 4x6 setup because we know that that's got all the right settings. We just want to change the size. I know I already loaded it, but I'm just going to uh, do that again to show you. I'm going to recall my 4x6 size. Now everything's set properly for the 4x6. All we have to do is change the paper size. We do that with printer setup. We click this button and we change this to 5 by 7. Our 300 ppi stays the same because we are going to want to send 300 ppi no matter what the size. So I'm going to click OK. Our page size goes to 5 by 7. Right mouse hold. I'm going to change my print size to 5 by 7 as well. My cropping is already on so I'm ready to go. Those are the only things I need to change. Now I have a 5 by 7 setup ready to go. All of these, this sRGB, 300 ppi, sharpening is all the same. We just change the print size and the paper size. So now I'm going to do save. Printer setup. I'm going to make this a little easier by selecting the old one. My prints 4x6. And I'm just going to change this 5 by 7. Now I have a 5 by 7 setup. Anytime I want to print 5 by 7s. I can load it. I can click this recall button, printer setups, and either one of these that I want to use, the 4x6 or the 5x7, whichever one I select, it'll be ready to go. It'll all, all of those settings that we made will already be done, so we don't have to go through them again. I'm going to use the 5x7 one, open that. Now I'm ready to print a file and create the 7x5 images that I want to send. I'll use this second row here. Just use the plus button and add each one of these photos. Now I've got four five by sevens ready to go. And all I have to do is click print. And even this was retained. JPEG 95 quality. The dot in auto naming is still there. So we only have to click OK. Say OK. Print. Now, let me show you a little trick here. This is an easy way to figure out where your photos are so that you're ready to upload them or you're ready to take them to the store. I'm going to go back here and go C colon photos my prints. And here, right here, is the folder that I created the first time I printed. But now I'm going to just add another backslash and I'm going to put let's say today's date 2011 and I'll and this doesn't matter I'll put 5 by 7 when I click OK it'll say do you want to create a new folder with this name on it yes and as before it's creating the new folder it's prepping the job that's why you see this uh, screen changing here a little bit. It's doing some things in the background to prep the job. Now if we go down here we see that it's processing the job. It's loading those four raw files. It's converting them to the sRGB color space, 300 ppi, giving it the appropriate sharpening for a 5x7 print at 300 ppi. And one more raw file and it's done. And like before I've already got this in my history of folders. If I go to the My Prints folder, I can see this new folder that I just created. Click on that. There are my new images, 5x7 this time. These are ready to go. So I can go to my web page of my online printing service, give it these files to upload, and as you can see down here on the bottom again, watch that. Uh, EXIF information, sRGB, all of these have been converted properly to sRGB. They're 2100 by 1500, which is 7 by 5 at 300 ppi. 
and they've had they've gotten the appropriate print sharpening for that amount of resampling that that 300 ppi resolution so hopefully you can see how setting up just several different printer setups can allow you with just a few clicks to arrange your photos crop them the way you want see exactly what you're going to get and make sure that your printing service is going to print the best quality prints that you can get from them just by using QImage Ultimate to prepare the files for you before you send them away. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you in the next video.